My name's David Mirabita. I'm an engineer with Open Kernel Labs, and I'd like to talk to you guys for a couple minutes about SMP, SMT, and um, how the kernel in general just deals with them. So here we have uh, a diagram of basically just a basic two CPU machine. Each one has one core, one thread, and the, the common base here is the, the RAM. So whenever we want to access some information from the other core, it has to get, make its way through to the cache, get flushed back to memory, and then get faulted into this guy's cache where he can read it. Um, now, this can be an intensive process. Even if you have um, cache snooping turned on, it can take some time for the data to get from one end to the other. So the original L4 implementation, which was only SMP aware, what it would do is would, it would get separate scheduling queues for each thread and try and keep all the data relevant to these threads local to the core. So it would mostly just stay fresh in the cache and you wouldn't have to do so much bouncing back and forth. Um, whenever this guy decides that he needs to operate on this, um, as happens when you're, you're running a system actually doing things, then what would happen is we would actually reserve one little bit here in the middle and then that would end up being the request, excuse me, can you please change this guy's priority, um, things like that. And it would send an interrupt to the other core and then it would do make the change on his behalf so that this way we don't have to keep moving the critical information about the thread back and forth between these cores um, because then you spend half of your time actually waiting for the thread data to move around and not actually doing useful work. Um, but, so that was good several years ago when um, more processors literally meant putting more chips on a board or through the shared memory. Um, but now with the advent of multi-core, multi-threaded chips, we're seeing a lot more things that are looking like this. So you have maybe two cores and one chip shared at the cache level, or um, even perhaps something like the pending force hyper-threading where you might have a couple of threads on the same core. Um, but that's something we're moving towards right now. We'll just think about uh, dual cores on two chips. So in this case, the threads are on the same core. I mean, yeah, on the same chip, and they're connected by the cache, maybe L1, L, does L2. Um, the point is they're close together and communication is relatively cheap. And so with the cheap communication, um, the model of asking the, re the remote core to actually do the work on behalf of you, it still works, but that might not be the best efficient uh, use of time. What we can instead do is if this guy would like to change the priority of a thread who's running on the other core, uh, he can just do it himself because it's close and then you, you can just do it without needing to wait to do the, um, the request and the waiting for it. And another benefit of this is um, if you have a thread running on this core, because of the migration costs, it's actually an explicit call from user land, hey, excuse me, can you please take this thread and move it over here? So if you're running a system and these threads go away, then this core has nothing to do and you actually need an explicit request to migrate some threads over to get some form of load balancing. Um, if the cores are close, then they still share a single queue. So basically any of these who are ready, if, if you've got two cores, then the highest two priority threads will be picked and they'll be running. Um, as they become idle, then a new one gets picked and it, basically you get load balancing for free because we're sharing the one queue. Um, so OKL4 has this idea that of domains and units. Now it's up to the system designer who actually knows about the hardware to define for himself what constitutes a domain and what a unit is. But the idea is domains are collections of cores that are possibly expensive to, um, to communicate between and a domain will have its own scheduling queue. And a unit, you can have any number of units within a domain, but that represents these guys and that's where the cheaper communication is and then yeah, and then they share the queue and you get load balancing among units within a domain. Um, so we think that this makes uh, quite flexible in terms of various chips and um, board designs that you may get. Mm. So just to finish up, that's just a, this has been a brief overview in um, how OKL4 makes use of the domains and the units ID and how it maps on to multi-threads, multi-cores, multi-processors, um, pretty much any system that you can throw at it, 
you'll be able to find a way to abstract our API over the hardware that you have. Uh, for more information, please uh, feel free to have a look at the wiki or the, the developer mailing list, and one of us will be um, glad to try and help you out.